Welcome back to Fixing My Faith. I'm your host, Vern Houle. And today we're going to discuss a very controversial subject, the Trinity. The Trinity is a subject when we were indoctrinated as a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, it was a word that um, was associated with the Catholic Church. So, of course, the um, going back right to the beginning, Rutherford especially wanted nothing to do with the Catholic Church. So, so there's a big separation. Now, I went back on just to do a refresher last night. Uh, I looked at uh, what the JW.org says, and they were talking about Jesus, and it was right on their site. There's a small video you can watch. I don't encourage you to watch any of their stuff. It's all uh, indoctrination designed to um, to fit their their beliefs, what they want you to believe. So when I looked at the indoctrination, it talks about Jesus being separate, being created from God. And um, through Jesus, everything else came into existence. And the Holy Spirit was in there as God's active force. Um, Jesus is not God. Jesus is a different entity. They call Jesus Michael the Archangel sometimes. So as you can see... Um, for us, just coming out of the uh, Jehovah's Witness religion, our minds are a bit confused. We have to do a bit of research. I'm going to share with you where I'm at. This is just sharing. I'm sharing how I'm fixing my faith. And and uh, and I'm looking to you as the audience uh, with more experience on this su subject to coach me along. Um, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to trying to fix my faith. And I, and I believe in God and I believe in Jesus. So I, I want to know who they are. And uh, I want to go back and fix the indoctrination that was put into my mind. So here's what I have so far. So I go to the Trinity. I go to the meaning of Trinity. Um, it's not nothing to be afraid of. I think uh, Jehovah's Witnesses were programmed to be afraid of this word, to demonize this word. And I, I, I think we have to really for us coming out, we have to look at this and give it a close look because every other religion pretty well believes in it. And uh, when you go around the earth, every religion on the earth believes in one God, Godhead supreme. They, they don't believe that there's two separate gods or three. They believe it's one ship, one God ship. So the Christian Godhead is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you notice what I put on my thumb tag and I have it behind me is that Godship, how it's looked at. It's just part of one. It makes sense. Um, a group of, of three people or things, noun, trinity, plural, trinities, a state of being three. So all this is, is, is really like a husband and wife working together with God's spirit as three. Three seems to be a significant number in the, in our realm. We, we are in a three dimensional realm. And to be in a three-dimensional realm, three is important. There's a whole science behind three. I like three. Now, we go further. What is the true meaning of Trinity? Trinity in the Christian doctrine is the unity of Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is three persons in one Godhead. What, what's? I don't get what's so hard to believe about that. I thought we believed that as Jehovah's Witnesses. I thought that's kind of what we believed in, that, that they were all working as one. Now, what is, why is it called Trinity? The word, the Trinity, are the English equivalent of the Latin words Trinitus, which was coined by the early Christian writer Ter Terlium. I butchered that. The word, which uh, I'm not even going to try that one, uh, means something like tripleness is used to refer collectively to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there, there's quite a bit of words there, but it's just referring to the God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. And, and when we look at the scriptures, Jesus is baptized in the name of the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So baptized in the name of that Godship. I get it. Uh, what are the three beliefs about Trinity? This belief is called the doctrine of the Trinity. God, the Father, the Creator, the Sustainer of all things. God, the Son, the incarnation of God as a human being. Jesus Christ on earth. That makes sense. So when we, we think of the beginning, God, the Father, the Creator, um, then Jesus came to, to earth, was the incarnation of God as a human being. 
So Jesus is the only entity God created. Like none of the angels were created by God. It's Jesus. And then the Godship created everything else. But only God created Jesus. That's it. That was a start. I have an illustration for you at the end. Um, I think that's all I had here for uh, explanations on the Trinity. There was two scriptures I want to look at. And uh, the two that I'm going to look at are here. There's one in, uh, where is it? Ministers of a New Covenant. Oh, I want to look at this one. This is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. And the reason I put this one is as the first scripture, this was, this was interesting to me. It says, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. So if we think of it, I, I know I had this veil over my eyes for 30 years in the Jehovah's Witness religion. And that's why to keep a veil on the um, governing body, that's why they have to keep indoctrinating with the watchtower all the time to keep that veil. And they keep their people so busy with all the indoctrination, all the videos online, all the watchtower, the awake, all the magazines. Because you could imagine how many thousands of writers the Watchtower has. They have a big selection, 8.5 million people. So they have many writers writing so much stuff that the people are always being indoctrinated. So the veil is always kept on. So now when you get out of the religion and, and you actually look up and you say, Yeshua, Jesus, Jehovah, Yahweh, whatever name you give. And I'm leaning a little bit more towards the Yeshua and Yahweh, but um, that's just on my research at this point. And I think my personal belief is if you're praying to the highest entity, whether you're using Allah, whether it's in Chinese or another language, your intent is to connect with the highest entity, the Supreme Being, no matter what your words you use. So it's, it's about intent. That's what I believe, but I think it's good to know the truth about things too. But here's what it says. But when, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled, with an unveiled face, beholding the glory of God are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. So isn't this something? So for us XJWs, we're all being transformed. This veil's being lifted as we progress in, in, in unwinding all these layers from the onion that, uh, that the indoctrination from the Jehovah's Witness religion put into our minds. It takes time. I thought at the beginning I could do this in a day or two, but this takes some time. For me, I, I did 30 years. I did 30 years time uh, in the cult. And I'm a, uh, I, I look at myself as a cult survivor, a 30-year cult survivor, 40 years actually, because I wandered around in the wilderness for 10 years with this garbage in my head, not removing it. So it's in the last six months. And this takes time to take this veil away. So I, uh, I have a new respect for everyone out there that came out of this religion. I have a, a brand new respect. So... This is good, this veil. And I was doing a little bit more research. Um, the word apocalypse, actually, the Greek word means to lift the veil. That's what it means. I'm, I'm going to do another movie on that. Very interesting. But anyways, let's carry on. Um, Revelation. Uh, this, this is, I, I threw this one in because I was, I was doing some research into Revelation. And I thought, well, it'd be good to know what revelation means. So we'll do another thing on that. But this one's talking about rejoicing in heaven, Revelation 19. And I go down here and it says the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who, who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worship the image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. I don't know what all that means. But the reason I this came up is because of this word false prophet. So the false prophet, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, um, they uh, 
they're, they're in here. And it says they're going to be thrown into this lake of fire alive. So do we take that literal? I don't know. But it, it's a bad thing. I don't want to be affiliated with this false prophet. If I'm running around door to door as a Jehovah's Witness, am I not being an angel of light? Am I not carrying and being a part of this false prophet? That's why I think this is so important to understand some of this stuff. But let's understand the deity. So here we have, uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse 6. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for, for whom we exist. One Lord Jesus, uh, through whom all things and through whom we exist. So it talks about we come from God and uh, then there's one Lord Jesus through whom all things and through whom all things exist. So there was God, then there was Jesus, and then everything existed after, after that happened. That's what I'm reading there. So I wanted to go a little bit further, and I opened this up in the um, Jewish Bible. And uh, this is where I, I need a translator. Yet, in fact, for us, we have one deus, and, and I'm going to butcher all these words, that there is a doni ika, Lord is one, Hashem, Eva. You know, I don't know, one father of us all. So what I see in this Bible, it has, has more meaning. There's more depth to to understanding this Godship. And uh, so, um, you know, this is the kind of coming back from the Jewish or the time of Jesus. This is getting really close to kind of how he spoke. I would like to learn a little bit more about it. I, I don't feel I'm qualified. So we may have a guest speaker in the new year that comes and talks about some of this. So I've been doing research. What does Hashem mean in Hebrew? Hashem, um, literally the name often abbreviated, is a title used in Judaism to refer to God. So they 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 have just to it really helps to identify who God is in in that language. Um, uh, Adona Olam, uh, this is a eternal Lord or sovereign of the universe. So that has a different meaning in Hebrew. And what was this one? Shem Yeshua Meshiach, and this. To me, um, it talks about to save, rescue, or deliver. Thus, the name Yeshua means the Lord saves or delivers. So this would be an equivalent to what uh, they, they call Jesus, is what I'm, I'm seeing. So we did a little video on Yeshua. And uh, Yeshua, Yeshua, please stand up. You know, we want to know who the true Yeshua is. <laughs> uh, I would like to know. So... Then I go to this scripture, the preeminence of God. We've used this many times as a Jehovah's Witness, Colossians 1. And we would support our Jehovah's Witness belief on this scripture. So here it's talking about Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven, on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities. All things were created through him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church, the beginning of everything. So this tells me that there was a, a time that Jesus didn't exist. That's what this tells me. And I'll give you an illustration at the end here. So I kind of took this a little bit further, and I, I went to the Hebrew Bible. And again, there was a whole pile of words I had to learn. But you can follow it along, and it does make sense if you do a little work. Uh, so I was looking more at these other words, um, and uh, please be kind to me. Like There's lots of different words that we don't see in English. So uh, it's interesting. I thought it was interesting. And uh, so then I talked about the apocalypse comes from the Greek apocalypse uncovering. So unveiled. So when we think of uh, our eyes, our veil being lifted. So the, the Greeks said that's the apocalypse, or the veil's being lifted. Maybe that's what's happening right now. Maybe all this veil's coming up. Well, I know as an XJW it is, big time. Uh, maybe for others out there, they've seen all this for years and years, and it's new for us. But the veil is being lifted. So that's about it on this subject for now. Um I do have some other ones. I'm going to be talking about some of the Revelation stuff just on this channel because everyone's interested in it. And again, I'm not a, an expert in any of this stuff. I'm trying to fix my faith and figure out what's what using just the Bible. But I thought that was interesting. The Trinity, it's, it's, it's something that uh, we can accept. 
as ex Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not scary. It's not demonized at all. It's just it's it, like the scriptures say. It's it's the three working as one Godship. So hang in. I'm going to show you my illustration here. Okay, so this um, chapter is from a book called Finding Purpose. You'll see the thumbnail behind me. It's a book I wrote uh, back in 2018. I started writing this book uh, 2016. So I left the Jehovah's Organization in 2012. Um, a few years went by and I guess I got bored. So I started writing this book. Well, I had lots of stuff going on in my mind. So I started writing a journal. And the journal turned into a, a book, and I made a, a fictional book out of it. It was the best way for me to, because I don't know what's true and, and what's not true. So I just started writing a fictional story, and it was kind of my life story, kind of a journey, right from the universe, from the cosmos, right to the earth, all the way through. So I shared bits and pieces of this story. It will be available um, hopefully in the new year. I do have another book coming out prior to this one. And I'll share that on a special video with you. But this book I wrote and I finished it in 2018. And this chapter is talking about the dawn of the universe. Now, this book is talking about a person, fictional, um, that came from Jesus' time through a portal of time. And it was a, it was a girl called, her name was Amalia. And Amalia in uh, the Jewish religion means something. That name, it means to... Uh, to follow God or something, something like that. I forget. <laughs> it was a few years ago I wrote it. So Amalia started by teaching me the ABCs of one, two, three by using an apple illustration for her lesson. She explained that once a person grasps, grasps the meaning of one, two, three, then a person can see the universe. Her first lesson started with one. She took, she took an apple and she polished it with a, with a, with a towel as she paced back and forth in the kitchen. And she began to tell the story of the ancient Druid's belief. And it went like this. Imagine, she says, that in the beginning of time for our universe, the God energy was all in this apple in my hand. God, who, by the way, is neither a he nor a she, but God is the creator of all. With all of God's energy inside this apple, there is no other existence no lights, no stars, no planets. God wanted to share the power in the experience one day, but to do this, he knew that the apple had to be divided internally into two equal pieces, equal in stature, equal in power, but completely opposite poles of energy. To accomplish this task of giving up self, this became the first act of love ever. God soon realized that this that two is better than one. For if it were only God alone, then how could he alone experience, share, and love these wonderful ideas and achievements? Divided in half, God could share and rejoice together with the other half, the two. They could plan, develop, and share success and failures together. Everything is still dark in the universe. So they would work together within designing and fabricating something wonderful together, something bright. It became evident that to carry out their plans for a universe and for other life forms, both the one and the two required a three. They would each have to give up half of their remaining power to create the three. From these three numbers, all numbers are found in life. She explains by scratching these simple grade one equations into the sand, like one plus one equals two and one plus two equals three and so forth. Seven has multiple pathways and nine is a sum of the highest combination of three. Amalia says the information is given in small doses so the student can absorb and build up new understandings of life. She of course already knew that I was saturated with numbers. So, um, that's it. So here, here it is. So we come back and then she breaks open the apple with the opposing forces of, of her hands. So let me see if I can do that. So she broke the apple open and the seeds, there's some seeds that flew out here on my desk. And now we have the, the two apples. And she laughs and uh, we both eat the apples together. 
She explains how their way is not much different of the traditional beliefs, like in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is everywhere, and it is the, the three parts of the one of God. All things come from God, the one, and from there we get the two. It is the first act of sharing. The one in the beginning had all the power, but to share the power within, the two had to be established with opposite and equal forces. So then they both could equally push apart. This allowed them together giving birth to the universe. These seeds were then seeded across the cosmos, and over time, we became part of this unique field of living beings. So that's the illustration um, that I had that I wrote in that book. I'm looking for comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, this helps us to get to know God better by us sharing and uh, and learning together as XJWs. This is this is all we have. So I really appreciate your comments, and I thank you for that. And I thank you for your, your interest in this channel. So friends, until next time, keep living your life with love.